When it comes to numbers, we actually have several different data types to work with in C Sharp and generally in programming. There are plenty of good reasons why we need to make these distinctions generally in programming between integral numbers and floating point numbers. As we have already seen, everything boils down to how many bits we actually allocate in memory, and we have different needs based on the different types of numbers. So let's start with the integral number. So first we have the default integer, which requires by default 32 bits to be represented. However, what should we do if we have numbers that are actually smaller and that don't require 32 bits? Well, for this we have created another data type that is the short, and the short is a whole number, an integral number that can be represented on only 16 bits. On the other hand, if we work with numbers that require more than 32 bits to be represented, we have this other data type which is called long and it requires 64 bits to be represented in memory. With these constraints come also some limitations on the maximum numbers that we can fit into each of these data types. Like for instance, in the integer, the maximum number that we can fit into 32 bits is between minus 2 billion and something and 2 billion and something. When it comes to the short, the numbers that we can fit in 16 bits are from minus 32,000 to 32,000 and something. And when it comes to long, well, I can't even read this out, but there are very big numbers. So as we see, when it comes to integral numbers, the actual limitation that we have based on the bits that we need to represent a number is the maximum value of that specific number. However, when it comes to floating point numbers, we have something else that's very important and that is the precision. And the higher the precision, the more bits we actually need to represent that specific floating point number in our memory. And here we have these three data types that we use very commonly, which is the first one is the float that requires only 4 bytes, therefore 32 bits, but it only has a precision of about 6 to 9 digits. Then we have the double that requires 8 bytes, so 64 bits, and here we have already a higher precision between 15 and 17 digits. Last but not least, we have the decimal data type that requires 16 bytes, but it also has the highest precision. So as you can see from here, the higher the precision, the higher the size that we need to allocate in memory. Now let's move over to Visual Studio and let's see how we can work with them. And we'll start obviously with the integer. And here we just declare this with the keyword int, and then we use x here as the variable name, and here we can provide the value 5. Similarly to this, we can then just simply say here and int y equals 7. And obviously here in the console write line, we can, for instance, say that we want to write line the x. And if we run the application, we see that it writes the value 5. Here we already also see why we might need a data type that requires actually less bits in memory. Because if we want to store the number 5, if we can recall, this number 5 doesn't really need all the 32 bits from an integer to be represented. So what we can do here instead is we can simply replace this with short. And in this case, if we run the application, it will have the exactly same output. So nothing changes here, but the amount of memory that we allocate for this number is now smaller. And to make this number make use of the, an entire integer, let's for instance change this to 40,000. And now this y would need these all the 32 bits in order to be represented. And if we run the application right now, we can see printed in the console this 40,000. Similarly, if we want to have here long z, and then here we can make it have this entire value. And here, if we want to display z in the console, then obviously we can do this and everything will still work correctly. Now let's make a little bit of space here and let's move to the floating point numbers. So let's start with the float data type and let's have here float A and here we have this number 5.5. Now there is a trick when we work with floats and in general with these floating point numbers. Because here as we have different ways to represent this number like float or decimal or even double, now we have to make a clear distinction that this number should be a float. And to do this we have this ending here which is an F. So this defines that what we have here is actually a float. And here, if we display in the console this number A, everything should work as expected. So we will have 5.5 displayed here. In a way, in C sharp, double is the, I would say, default floating point number type. And the reason why I say that it is the default one is because when we declare a double and initialize a value to it, we don't really have to provide any letter after the number so that we indicate that it is actually a double. So let's change here the A to B and let's run the application again and we'll see that the output will change. In this case, it will be 5.5. 5. 
The only difference is that the double will require a higher amount of memory in our application. Last but not least, let's look also into the decimal. And we have here this decimal C. And here we provide this 5.5.5. But here we need to provide this ending, which is the letter M. And that would make our number being a decimal. And let's change this in the console and let's run the application and we'll see exactly the same output. But this time we have a higher memory consumption. However, the precision is actually very important because oftentimes when we work with things that should be very precise, like for instance, currencies, even if the decimal takes actually more memory, we should definitely use this decimal because it has a higher precision. And when we work with currencies and other very such important things, we don't want to lose this precision. Now I would like to move to another very important aspect of working with numbers in C-sharp, and this is what we call type conversions or numeric type conversions. So here we have this short x, and this is equals to 5, and then we have an int y, and this equals to 40,000. Now let's, for instance, say right now that we want this y to be equal to x, and we want to display this in the console. So let's run the application and we see that everything works correctly. However, now we have to wonder a little bit because we know that this x is a short and we know that y is an integer. And we have seen in the previous video and we have said at that point that we cannot assign one data type to another data type. And when it comes to numeric data types, there is this concept of numeric type conversion. So C sharp automatically converts a number between different types if this is possible. Remember here is where the bits that this number takes in is very important because short can be represented with only 16 bits. Now integer is represented with 32 bits. Now the thing is that since 16 is actually less than 32, it means that a number that can be represented on 16 bits can obviously also be represented on 32 bits. So this is why this type conversion works okay. But let's take a look at what happens if we try to do the other way around. So we say that x equals y. So in this case, you see that we have a very small squiggly line here. And here it says that cannot implicitly convert type int to short and its explicit conversion exists. Now, the thing is that the very first part of this message is important. Because in this case, what we try to do is we want to represent a number that takes in 32 bits, like an integer, in a number that can only be represented on 16 bits. And obviously this is not possible and that's why we get this error and right now our application doesn't even compile. So the numeric type conversion only works when we try to convert or when we want to automatically convert from data types that require less memory to data types that require more memory. So before we move to the flows to show that this exact principle also works for floating point numbers, let's go back and make y equal x. And let's now move to the floating point number. So here we have float a. Remember this float requires 8 bytes, so 32 bits, and the double requires 64. Now this means that for instance that we can say here b equals to a and everything should work correctly. So if we display B in the console and we run the application, everything should be fine and we get this number five displayed here. But once again, if we want to do the other way around, now the problem is that we try to represent here a number or we try to assign a number that takes 64 bits to be represented with the required precision into a number that only requires 32. And obviously we get the red squiggly line and we get the message that cannot implicitly convert from type double to float. So the other way around, it really doesn't work. So let's change it back to a working environment. So B equals A. Before we move forward to other data types, I would like to also show you or discuss one very important thing when it comes to working with the console. On one hand, you can see here that we have this console right line and we can provide the number B and it gets printed in the console. However, we have explained in the previous video that when we do a console write line or even a console read line, so when we want to read input, we are actually working with strings. Now, the trick is that when we console write line a number, there is an overload, so C-sharp, the compiler, does know exactly how to transform this number into a string so that it can be represented in a console. However, when we read input from the console, then everything is very dynamic and C-sharp and the compiler can't know beforehand exactly how this conversion would work. So there is a trick when we would like to get some numeric input from a console application. 
So let's try to do this. We say that we have this int and we call this user number. And here we say, for instance, that this number should be equal to console.readline. And here, basically, you already see that we have this red squiggly line. And this line says, if we say here, or if we take a look here in the exception message, we see that cannot implicitly convert type string to integer. Now, as I said, when we read from the console, it is a string, and we need a way to kind of like convert it to an integer. And here we can, for instance, use this int keyword. And on the, this int keyword, we have this parse method, similarly to the format method that we have on the string and that we have taken a look previously. So if we say here int parse and, and we provide the console read line here as an argument to this method, here what it happens is that the input that is read basically from the console is actually transformed or parsed, transformed into an integer. And right now what we can do here, we can console write line and the user number and everything should work correctly. Now, if you remember, the first thing that we need to do here is we need to provide a number. Let's provide number 12. And we see that number 12 was printed in the console and then the other numbers from the other console read lines. So everything worked correctly. However, let me show you another thing. If, for instance, I provide here a letter instead of number, like for instance, A, here we give, we get this exception, system format exception. The input string A was not in a correct format. And we usually get this exception whenever we try to get some input that is a string and we cannot, or C sharp cannot convert it into an integer. Now on exception, we will have a dedicated lesson and we'll talk about more exceptions and how do we handle exceptions in our application. But for now, it's important to note that when we want to read numbers from the console, what we need to do is we need to parse them and transform them from a string into a number. So we can use int don't parse if we want to have this as an integer, but for instance, if we want to have this as a double, we have the same parse on the double. So we can say double dot parse. And it's exactly the same on all the different numeric data types, also on the floating point numbers like float, double, and decimal. So if we run the application right now, it will work exactly the same. Now, for instance, let's have 12. Here, once again, we got 12 printed in the console, but this time 12 was a double. And to prove that it was actually a double, let's, for instance, have this number, and we see that it is printed in the console, so we don't get any error, we don't get an exception, but instead, the program works just fine. For now, that's everything that's important for us to understand and to know on how we work with numbers in C-sharp. So let's move over to the next lesson where we'll talk about another very important data type, which is arrays.